Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you a simple example in Excel that will help you understand how you can calculate a firm's operating cash flow using income statement data. In the process, you will also learn how a firm's net income is different from its operating cash flow. So consider Kraft Incorporated. You're told that it has sales of 49,800, costs of 23,700, depreciation expense of 2300, and interest expense of $1,800. If the tax rate is 22%, you're being asked, what is the operating cash flow for Kraft Incorporated? Now, one of the first things you can do here is that you can use these data to construct Kraft's income statement. So the sales are given, the costs are given, depreciation is given. You can use this information to figure out Kraft's earnings before interest and in taxes. You can also think of this as Kraft's operating income, not operating cash flow. We'll talk about it in a minute, but operating income. And so this is equal to 49,800 minus 23,700 minus $2,300. So 23,800 is earnings before interest and taxes. From this, you will then subtract interest expense, which is a financing expense, and you can get your taxable income or earnings before taxes. So equal to $23,800 minus $1,800. So this is your taxable income. You're told that the tax rate is 22%. So to figure out taxes, you'll do equal to 0.22 times the taxable income. This is your taxes. And so net income will be equal to the difference between this number and the taxes. Now, in order to calculate Kraft's operating cash flow, which I'm going to abbreviate as OCF, you need to understand two main things. First, net income is not the same thing or profit is not the same thing as cash flow. Specifically, one of the costs that we deduct in order to calculate net profit or net income is depreciation. But depreciation is what we call a non-cash expense, meaning that when we say that our assets have depreciated by $2,300, that doesn't mean that $2,300 has actually left our bank account or our wallets. Why? Because depreciation is merely a way for us to recognize that we bought some fixed assets, say a van or some machinery, maybe some years ago, and now we're using some of that in this specific year. So what the IRS says is that, okay, because you used a portion of that machinery in this specific year, therefore you can expense that specific part in this year and reduce your tax liability because of that. So this $2,300 depreciation expense could very well be on a piece of machinery that you bought, say, three years ago for $15,000. IRS says, look, you cannot expense that entire $15,000 because this machinery is going to be used over several years. So if you're using $2,300 worth of this machinery in this year, then that is the only amount that you expense and therefore reduce your tax liability by in this year. But please understand that this $2,300 is not leaving your bank account right now. Rather, it was the full $15,000 that left your bank account several years ago when you bought the piece of equipment. And so one of the first things that you have to do in order to get your cash flow position is that you have to recognize that, oh, wait a minute, this $2,300 never left. I actually have this. So you have to add depreciation to your profitability or your net income measure at the very least. So that's the first thing that you have to do. The other thing that you have to recognize is that we're trying to measure a firm's operating cash flow, which is cash flow that is being generated by the operations. The reason why that is important is because there are two main types of costs on the income statement. There are operating costs, which are costs that result because of operations, like, like cost of goods sold, depreciation, wages, salaries, whatever, which results in earnings before interest and taxes. And then there's another cost, which is interest expense, which is a financing cost. Whenever we are trying to measure a firm's operating cash flow, which is cash flow that is being generated by operations, we don't care about its financing expenses. We only care about its operating expenses and the operating income. 
So we are not directly concerned with net income. Rather, we are looking at earnings before interest and taxes or a firm's operating income. So when I said that you have to add back depreciation, you don't add depreciation back to net income because net income is net of both operating and financing expenses. We don't want to do that. We only want to take a look at earnings before interest in taxes. Hence, operating is cash flow is calculated as earnings before interest in taxes, which is your operating income. You subtract the taxes from it because taxes are a cash outlay. This is money that does actually leave the business, but then you add back depreciation because you recognize that depreciation is a non-cash expense. It is important to note here that both depreciation and your interest expense do influence your taxable income, which influences how much you pay in taxes. However, when you're calculating operating cash flow, it is your operating income from which you then deduct the taxes and then add back depreciation. And now we have all the ingredients to figure out Kraft's operating cash flow. Its earnings before interest in taxes is calculated right here. From this, we will subtract the taxes, which is right here. And then we will add depreciation, which is $2,300. And so Kraft's operating cash flow is $21,260. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.